The Stormlight Archive is a currently running epic fantasy series written by Brandon Sanderson. Taking place on the world of Roshar, this enormous ongoing series is what many would consider the flagship series of the Cosmere. Now, on the world of Roshar, there were once what people called the Heralds, and they were responsible for the formation and leadership of an order of warriors called the Knights Radiant. In this video, I'd like to explore these figures and the Knights to briefly give you an overview and basic understanding. I will try to keep this as spoiler free as possible when it comes to the actual plot lines within the novels. There will of course be details discussed here that would only be revealed later on in the first book or in the series in general, but I will avoid any actual plot spoilers. So if you haven't read this series and are considering giving it a try, please feel free to watch this without worrying about whether or not it would ruin the actual story for you. But without further ado, let's jump right in. The Heralds on the world of Roshar, there were once these cataclysmic events called Desolations. During this time, the humans of the world would face off against what they called the Voidbringers in a gigantic war. This war would be so large and devastating that at the end, humanity would be regressed to a pre-Bronze Age society. All technology and progress would have crumbled and the humans would have to pick themselves back up and start from scratch. Seeing all this, a god of Roshar called Honor, or the Almighty, decided that he wanted to help humanity at least stand a chance against the Desolations and Voidbringers. So he recruited 10 humans and imbued them with special powers and abilities, making them immortal in the process, to help lead humanity against the Voidbringers and increase their chance of survival. These 10 humans were called the Heralds, and they were bound by what was called the Oath Pact. The Oath Pact said that the Heralds were to help and lead humanity during the times of desolation. Any Herald that died during a desolation would go to a place known as Braze or Damnation, where they would be tortured and tormented ceaselessly. Any Herald that survived the desolation would have to volunteer to go to Braze anyway to suffer the same fate. The purpose of this was that the act of keeping the Heralds on Braze held the Void Bringers back and delayed the coming of the next desolation. If any one of the Heralds gave in to the torture and could no longer hold out, the Voidbringers and the Heralds would return to Roshar and the next desolation would begin. With this system in place, humanity had some hope for enough time to recover and rebuild after each desolation. Though the system was put in place to give humanity some respite and time to prepare, it was completely reliant on the Heralds honoring their commitment to the Oath Pack and voluntarily giving themselves up to be tortured in order to protect humanity. Unfortunately, there was a limit to how much a person or even a group of people could take. You see, though they were essentially immortal, their minds were not immune from the effects of the Oathback. Living for eons and being tortured for a large majority of that time eventually took a large mental toll on each of the Heralds. The time they could hold out against the torture to put off the next desolation became shorter and shorter. Eventually it got so short that there were only two years between desolations and humanity held no hope of recovering. At the end of the last desolation, before the story of the first book occurs, the Heralds all came together and made a choice. They were so incredibly exhausted and mentally drained that they knew they could no longer continue like this. At this time, only one Herald named Talanel, or Talm, had died in the war while the rest had all survived. They knew that they would all have to volunteer to go back to Braze to be tortured until they caved in once more and returned. So they made the difficult decision and all elected to abandon the Oath Pact. They refused to return to Braze and left Talm to be tortured on his own. He alone would hold back the whole Voidbringer force in a state of perpetual torture. To their surprise, Talon has managed to hold back the desolation on his own for over 4,000 years and has given humanity a much needed chance to recover, grow and flourish on Roshar. This is where the story of the first novel begins. The Knights Radiant The Knights Radiant were a large order of warriors with power akin to those of the Heralds themselves. Unlike the Heralds who were given their abilities by the Almighty, the Radiants gained their powers by another means and used them with great skill. Seeing the potential for this, the Herald Ishar took these warriors and formed them into the 10 different orders of the Knights Radiant. Though they were not a part of the order themselves, the Heralds became the patrons of these orders and led them in some capacity. The exception to this would be the Herald Nail, who actually joined the order of Radiants he was the patron of. 
The duties of the Radiance were to watch for the coming desolations and to help lead and train humanity in the time between them. This gave a major boost to the success of humans against Voidbringers in the coming wars, as they would be protected and trained even when the Heralds were on braze and could not be there to lead them at the time. The abilities of the Radiance were tied to the different ideals each order spoke. Each order had a different set of ideals that a member would have to speak in order to progress in rank, power and ability. While each different order had unique ideals, the first ideal was identical amongst all the orders. Life before death, strength before weakness, journey before destination. Ultimately, just like the Heralds, the Knights Radiance also abandoned their oaths. This event was known as the Recreance, and from that day the Knights Radiant became known as the Lost Radiance, spurned by humanity for abandoning their duties. As I previously stated, each of the Heralds had an order of Radiance towards which they acted as the patron or leader to a degree. I'd like to briefly touch on each of these orders, their Heralds and the abilities they were in possession of. Please note that there is an important and major aspect of the Radiance specifically linked to the powers and ideals and how these manifest that I'm deliberately excluding from this video. Those who have read the books will of course realize what I've chosen to omit, but please know I'm doing so specifically for the benefit of those who have yet to read the first book as that book deals in large part with this aspect. Because of how closely it is linked with the actual narrative of the story, I opted to not talk about it to avoid spoilers. Windrunners The Windrunners were an order of Radiance that were able to control the surges or forces of gravitation and adhesion. If you haven't read the books yet and you aren't exactly sure what this means, don't worry too much about it right now. Basically, all you need to know is that by manipulating gravity, they could essentially fly, make items float or fall in a certain direction, or stick items together. Their ideals were primarily concerned with protection and defending the innocent and helpless. While the first ideal is the same for all orders, their other ideals dealt with protecting others, the caveats behind protecting others, and forgiving themselves for past failures. The Herald of the Windrunners was Jezrian. Known as the Herald of Kings, he was the best leader and instructor on leadership ever known. It is said he was a very honourable man and is said to have been one of the best men to have ever lived. When he returned during the desolations, he would teach leaders and kings on how to lead men and aid them in running their kingdoms and fiefdoms effectively and honourably. Lightweavers The Lightweavers were radiants who could control the surges of illumination and transformation. This basically means that they were able to create illusions and transform objects into something completely different. For example, they could turn a block of wood into a pile of grain, or turn air into stone. Unlike most other orders, the Lightweavers did not speak straightforward oaths or ideals. Instead, their ideals took the form of specific truths they had to speak about themselves in order to progress within their order. Some say it is because they blur the line between truths and lies so often, and thus they must be acutely aware of the difference. The Herald of the Lightweavers was Shalash. Known as the Herald of Beauty, she was a respected artist and is one of the heralds known to be the most regretful of the betrayal of the Oath Pact. She has no problem with infiltration and subterfuge, but despises thievery in all its forms. Bondsmiths the Order of Bondsmith Radiants are quite interesting. Their power lies in connecting the minds and hearts of men and in connecting different realms together. They stood for unity and were instrumental in unifying the different orders and nations of the world against the coming threats. The full extent of the power the Bondsmiths wield is completely unknown, but it is believed that their power is the greatest and most impressive of all the orders. The ideals of the Bondsmiths were concerned primarily with bonding and uniting. In addition, the ideals were also required them to become better people over time. This is likely because of how important it is for those responsible in unifying people to be exemplary in their own honour. The Herald of the Bondsmiths was Ishar, Herald of Luck. Ishar was actually responsible for the bonds that formed the Oath Pact. In addition, he also formed the different orders of the Knights Radiant when mortals began displaying the ability to use the same powers as heralds. Even amongst heralds, the Radiants were often referred to as Ishar's Knights. Edge Dancers 
edge dancers with the order of radiance able to manipulate the surges of abrasion and progression. This means that they could effectively remove any and all friction from their bodies, allowing them to glide along a battlefield as if they were skating on ice. They could also heal others and cause plants to grow at exponential rates. The ideals of edge dancers were primarily concerned with remembering and advocating for ordinary people. They considered it their solemn duty that they were the servants to the people. To them, their duty was to the people of the world and they would often be found deeply intermingled in the affairs of the populace. The herald of the edge dancers was Vedel. Not much is known about Vedel, but we do know she was primarily concerned with training surgeons and doctors whenever she returned to Roshar. Many believe she was a doctor herself before becoming a herald as she held a great amount of knowledge on medicine and surgery, and she often personally trained medical practitioners. Now, the rest of the orders are less well known and there is less known about them than those prior. I will still attempt to paint a proper picture of exactly what each order was and their abilities though. Before I continue though, I'd like to ask that you please press the like button if you're enjoying the video. And if you like this kind of content, I upload 3 times a week so please feel free to subscribe. I'm currently trying to hit my first 100 subscribers and everyone helps me get closer to that goal. It really helps to motivate me knowing that people are enjoying and actively looking forward to the content I put out. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your support. And if you've made it this far in the video, let me know in the comments by telling me what your favourite order of Radiant is. Anyway, that's enough of that, let's get on with it shall we? Skybreakers The order of Skybreakers were Radiants who were able to manipulate the surges of gravitation and division. This means they could do most of what the Windrunners could do and are also able to destroy or degrade materials around them. Not much is known about the full potential of Skybreaker's power, but it can be agreed that they were a formidable force to be reckoned with. The ideals of the Skybreakers were primarily concerned with the fact that the will and the perspectives of ordinary people were too fallible and changeable to be trusted. So the Skybreakers committed themselves to following the letter of the law. They believed that the letter of the law was to be followed at all costs and that in order to remain honourable, one must put the law above all else. The Herald of the Skybreakers was Nail, the Herald of Justice. Nail was an empathetic and emotive man and knew that this was a flaw he could not allow. Thus he decided to dedicate himself to the law completely and wholly in order to remain fair and just. During desolations, Nail was responsible for teaching Rosharan countries about laws and help them implement fair and just legal systems. Else Callers the Elskola Order of Radiance was a very mysterious one about which not much is known. We know that they were able to use the surges of transformation and transportation. This means they could change one material into another like the light weavers could. They could also transport themselves to a different realm, separate from the physical realm. The ideals of the Elskolas are largely unknown, but we do know that they were primarily concerned with self-improvement and built on each other. Due to the nature of the ideals being built on improving oneself, they had a wider variety of people amongst their ranks. The patron of the Else Callers was the Herald Batar. Very little is known about her. Most of what we know is from legends and none can be verified. All we know is that she was often considered very wise and many Rosharan sayings and idioms are related to having the wisdom of Batar. Truth Watchers the Truth Watchers were another very mysterious order of Radiance. They had access to the surges of progression and illumination. This means they could heal like the Edge Dancers and create illusions like the Light Weavers. It's important to note here though that even though one order shared surges with others, each could use it to a different extent. For example, Windrunners flew more fluidly and masterfully than Skybreakers, Light Weavers made better illusions than Truth Watchers, and so forth. It's the combination of the two surges that made each unique. The ideals of the Truth Watchers were concerned mostly with seeking and protecting the truth. Unlike the Light Weavers who focused on more personal truths, the Truth Watchers were focused more on worldly truths and facts about the universe as a whole. The Herald of the Truth Watchers was Pelia. Pelia was another of those heralds that we know very little about. From all inferences found, it is likely she was a scholar before becoming a herald. 
the gigantic library in Carbranth called the Palanium is named after her. Stone Wards The Stone Wards were an order that acted as the infantry and ground troops of the Knights Radiant. They controlled the surges of cohesion and tension. This means they could reshape and control stone and other hard materials at will. They could also harden soft objects like clothing and turn it into weapons. The ideals of the Stone Wards all focused on teamwork and supporting others. They were the least likely of all orders to bend their ideals, and were seen as dependable and steadfast. Stone Wards regularly put the needs of others before their own. The herald of the Stone Wards was Talanel, otherwise known as Talm. Talm was the herald of war and soldiers. His other title is also Bearer of Agonies, as he was the one herald the rest left behind in damnation to be tortured until the next desolation. Unsurprisingly, as the patron of the Stone Wards, he has managed to hold back the desolation for over 4,000 years. Of all the heralds, the story of Talanel is the most disturbing and definitely the most heartbreaking. Dustbringers The Dustbringers were able to use the surges of division and abrasion. This means that they could break down objects like stone and flesh. They could also control friction like edge dancers, but it's unknown if they used it to glide around like the edge dancers did. Curiously, they disliked being called Dustbringers due to the similar connotations with Voidbringers and instead preferred the term Releasers, though that name never really caught on. The ideals of the Dustbringers were focused primarily on responsibility and controlling one's power. They believed in the importance of understanding the responsibility that came with power. Despite being very considerate and thoughtful, they were probably the most misunderstood of all the Knights Radiant and this was likely due to the destructive nature and capability of their powers. The Herald of the Dustbringers was Kanarak and she was considered the Herald of the Common Man. She was often considered as the protector of people and is associated with being a guardian. Not much else is known about Kanarak. Will Shapers The Order of Will Shapers were able to use the surges of cohesion and transportation. This means they were able to travel to different dimensions like Elscallers and mold stone like stone wards. The ideals of the Will Shapers were related to individual freedom and liberty. They considered the freedom of choice for all extremely important and championed self-expression. The Will Shapers were usually quite outgoing and adventurous, though due to their personalities they were often seen as fickle and unreliable. The patron herald of the Will Shapers was Kalak. Not much is known about Kalak during the Desolations. Many, however, considered him to be decisive and authoritative, and he would often be approached for counsel when conflict arose or when tough decisions needed to be made. I hope this video has been insightful and informative to those of you who were not yet familiar with the lore of the Stormlight Archive. And to those of you who were familiar, I hope you found some enjoyment in the video and my ramblings. Now, I hope some of you have commented your favourite Order of Radiance below because I'd love to see just which order is the most liked amongst my viewers. I'm sure we'll end up having some interesting conversations about it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and if you'd like to see more, please feel free to subscribe. This has been my longest video so far and has taken me more work than all prior videos so I'd really appreciate it if you could show your support. I really and truly appreciate each and every one of you. Anyway, this has been Raven, thank you very much for watching me, and I'll see you next time.